Getting a huge sunshade into space isn't cheap or easy. Roger Angels calculated that the total weight of the sunshade is 20 million tons. The space shuttle carries a total payload of 23 tons. This would require 870,000 trips, costing $450 million each. A total cost of $392 trillion, or 29 times the annual GDP of the USA. But could there be an answer to this stellar-sized problem in a simple campus physics experiment? This is a, a disk of aluminum, weighs about 10 pounds, and it's very pure aluminum that conducts electricity very well. And you can actually make this jump up into the air uh, just by uh, putting current in a coil underneath it. And it's, it's the principle of an electric motor really reduced to its simplest form. You pass the current, you get a force, something moves. But in this case, the motion, instead of being round and round as in a motor, we can get magnetic force straight up. The real launcher is a series of electrical coils inside a two kilometer long vertical tube. As the rocket rises past each coil, it gets an electric jolt, making it accelerate faster. It's very high acceleration, 4,000 G. So people would end up, you know, as uh, uh, red jam on the bottom of the rocket if you tried to launch with this. But we can design mechanical parts so that they can withstand this high G force. Electromagnetic power has never been used to launch rockets into space. It's too expensive for a one-off. But with huge quantities of glass needing many launchers, the figures could start to look more viable. Yeah, it. All right, let's see how it goes. Hey! <laughs> Well, that's the principle of the thing. We do that many times up the tower and get it out into space. To boost the journey into space, the electromagnetic launcher would need to be located near the summit of a mountain where the air is thinnest and the resistance of the Earth's atmosphere lower. The rockets would begin their journey deep inside the mountain. A massive electrical current powered by the launcher's own hydroelectric power station would propel the rocket skywards, one of them firing off every few minutes. If you imagine the, the sound of thunder when, when we put an electric arc through the atmosphere, right, and the air is heated and then crashes back on itself, well, you'll get, it'll be like, I think, an enormous uh, clap of thunder every time one of these goes up. Well, the first thing after it leaves the atmosphere is that you need to correct the course and get it headed towards where it has to be at L1, which is a million miles away. And that's done with this iron propulsion technique that was pioneered by the Europeans in the Smart One satellite that went to the moon. You then have within the rocket a stack of a million of these very thin flyers. So the next trick is to get them off the top of the stack. You put an electric charge, and then the top one is repelled away. Once they are released from the rocket, then they make their way to somewhere in the cloud. It doesn't really matter where. So they're all randomly spread out. 